It's that time again. Remain indoors if at all possible. Stock up on food, and if you must go out, whatever you do, keep your eyes fixed on the sky at all times. Of course, what we're talking about is the fact that China has just launched a new rocket into space, and we all know what happens when it does that, right? Regular viewers will remember that the Long March 5B rocket it used to send the Tianhe module of its space station into orbit memorably crashed to Earth last month, causing widespread criticism. So the question now is, what could be falling on our heads next? Here's what you need to know. China has launched three astronauts up to its new space station from its Zhoushan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China, according to Space.com, its first crewed mission in almost five years. The astronauts are aboard the Shenzhou-12 spaceship, which was propelled by a Long March 2F Y-12 rocket, according to the Associated Press. Space.com reports that Shenzhou-12's launch is the third of 11 required to build China's new space station, which it expects to complete before 2023. Already in position are the Tianhe core module, which contains the astronauts' living quarters, and the robotic Tianzhou-2 cargo craft, which attached to the core module late last month. Shenzhou-12 will dock with the core module, and the astronauts will then spend three months aboard. Tianhe is the third set of living quarters China has sent up to space after Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2. However, it is much larger than those vessels at 54 feet or 16.6 meters long versus their 34 feet or 10.4 meters. The core module contains three separate bedrooms and three times more interior space than its predecessors, Space.com reports, citing China's state-run press agency Xinhua. Once they have docked, the three astronauts will set up testing and experiments and conduct a series of spacewalks, according to the Associated Press. Two further lab modules called Wentian and Mengtian will complete the space station when they are attached to either side of Tianhe next year, according to Space.com, leaving it about 15% of the size of the International Space Station. The launch of the Tianhe module last month was criticized after part of the rocket that carried it to space made an uncontrolled re-entry to Earth. However, Ji Qiming, assistant director of China's manned space agency, dismissed the possibility of that happening again, according to the Associated Press. China has published the rocket's trajectory and and it is expected to burn up well before it could cause any danger," he said. So China says we should all be safe this time, and Ji even took the time to offer out a hand of friendship regarding the use of its new station. Outer space is the commonwealth of people all over the world, and exploring the universe is the shared cause of all mankind," Ji said. He then added, I believe that in the near future, when the Chinese space station is complete, we will see Chinese and foreign astronauts taking on joint missions to the Chinese space station. Of course, in international politics, altruism should always be viewed with some suspicion, and there it is clear that China sees space as an important source of power. In fact, with the Associated Press reporting that the Chinese station is intended to be used for 15 years, it is likely to outlast the International Space Station, which is nearing the end of its lifespan. This could mean that very soon, humanity's only working space station is owned by China. That's a very interesting position for the U.S. to be in, given it blocked Chinese involvement in the International Space Station. Maybe the U.S. can content itself with watching full-action replays of Chinese rockets crashing to Earth. The huge, 30-meter-tall core of a Chinese rocket is tumbling wildly through low Earth orbit and could crash anywhere on Earth in the coming days. The same type of Chinese rocket crashed into a village in West Africa a year ago. Here are the details. On Wednesday, April 28th, China launched a massive Long March 5B rocket that carried the first module of its planned space station into orbit. The Guardian reports that the core stage of this rocket was supposed to fall back to Earth in a controlled descent, but something went wrong, and the 30-meter-tall rocket stage started skipping on Earth's atmosphere. And no one knows where it will crash once the drag of Earth's atmosphere tugs it down to the planet's surface. Much of the core will likely burn up in the atmosphere, but there is a chance that some chunks of debris will survive the re-entry and rain down on the land or ocean. This, sadly, wouldn't be the first time. In May 2020, a Long March 5B rocket slammed through the atmosphere, partially burning up during its descent. The core fell largely into the Atlantic Ocean, but some debris landed in West Africa. According to the South China Morning Post, some chunks of debris crashed into houses and villages in Cote d'Ivoire, though thankfully no casualties were reported. 
On Tuesday, May 4th, the latest out-of-control Chinese rocket was orbiting Earth around once every 90 minutes at a speed of about 27,600 kilometers per hour and an altitude of more than 300 kilometers. The US military has named it 2021-035B, and its path can be seen on websites that track objects in Earth's orbit. What goes up must come down. This isn't the official motto of the Chinese space program, but if anyone has their email address, maybe we can pitch it to them. Because yet another of their rockets has just made an uncontrolled return to Earth. Here's what you need to know. Remnants of the Chinese Long March 5B rocket that was launched last month have crashed back down to Earth and into the Indian Ocean at a speed of around 4.8 miles per second, according to Reuters. On Sunday, Chinese state media, citing the China Manned Space Engineering Office, said the rocket debris had mostly burned up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. However, footage of the rocket's uncontrolled descent was recorded from Jordan, Oman, and Saudi Arabia, according to The Guardian. Corroborating those images, the monitoring service SpaceTrack, which uses U.S. military data, said the rocket was recorded above Saudi Arabia before falling into the Indian Ocean to the west of the Maldives. After days of speculation that the debris could hit land and endanger lives, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said in a statement on NASA's website, it is clear that China is failing to meet responsible standards regarding their space debris. Wang Wenbin, a spokesman for China's foreign ministry, dismissed concerns about the re-entry, saying it is common practice across the world for upper stages of rockets to burn up while re-entering the atmosphere. Emphasizing the lack of controlled outcome, Harvard-based astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell said the debris could have landed as far north as New York or as far south as southern Chile, according to The Guardian. The crash may not have been the only potentially dangerous part of this mission, either. On Monday, McDowell tweeted that the module the Long March 5B rocket launched into space had come within 300 kilometers of the International Space Station, close enough to raise the possibility of it being a deliberate gesture, according to McDowell. For anyone excited to find out when the next piece of Chinese engineering could land on their heads, the Shenzhou-12 mission will use a Long March 2F rocket to send three astronauts into low Earth orbit in June, according to Space.com. Do we have a new kind of space race on our hands? The answer might be yes, if Chinese President Xi Jinping has anything to do with it. On Thursday, he declared the latest step in China's manned space program an important pilot project in the building of a powerful nation in both technology and space, according to Reuters reporting quotes from Chinese state media. Here's what you need to know. China has launched the first module of its new Tiangong space station, according to the BBC. The module, known as Tianhe, is 16.6 meters long and 4.2 meters in diameter and will orbit Earth at an altitude of 340 to 450 kilometers or 210 to 280 miles. Once in orbit, the module will provide power and propulsion for the station and operate as the living quarters for astronauts. It will usually support three people at a time, and six during crew changeovers, according to IEEE Spectrum. The Wentian and Mengtian modules, designed to house scientific experiments, will connect with Tianhe in 2021. Tianhe's other docking ports will allow crewed Shenzhou and Tianzhou spacecraft to dock with the station. After being blocked from joining the International Space Station by the U.S., China's new station will be closer in size to the Russian Mir station, according to IEEE Spectrum. It will weigh 66 metric tons versus the International Space Station's 420 metric tons. Space.com reports China followed a three-step strategy to get to this stage, first building crewed spacecraft, followed by the mini space stations Tiangong-1 and 2. However, Tiangong-1 crashed to Earth in April 2018. Of course, the Tiangong station is by no means China's only space exploration project. It has already landed a rover on the far side of the moon, and according to the Associated Press, another Chinese rover is due to land on Mars within the next month. China says it's ready to become the first country to land and operate a rover on Mars on its first attempt. China's first ever Mars mission arrived in Mars orbit a few months ago, and is scheduled to release its Mars lander in a few days. Here are the details. The Chinese National Space Administration, or CNSA, says its Tianwen-1 orbiter will release its Zhurong Mars rover on May 17th. The orbiter arrived in Mars orbit on February 24th, carrying with it the rover and its landing cradle. The lander will detach from the orbiter and start to descend into Mars's thin atmosphere, protected by a heat shield that's designed to also slow the lander down with its sheer bluntness. 
Once the lander slows down enough, a large parachute will open and the heat shield will fall away, exposing the landing cradle. The cradle's landing legs would then deploy and the parachute would detach to let the lander fall freely. The CNSA says the lander would then fire a number of rockets to slow its descent, while also keeping the lander in an upright position until it touches down. After touchdown, the lander would deploy a ramp, while the rover deploys its sensor arms and solar panels. If the mission is successful, China would become the first country to land a rover on Mars on its first attempt. The Zhurong rover is carrying six pieces of scientific equipment. After landing, it would survey the surroundings to study Martian soil, geomorphology, and atmosphere. It would also look for signs of subsurface water ice. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.